we're here for a reason. Yeah, yeah. So today we kind of wanted to talk about um, we have a lot of youth that help out in worship, and they use some of these things that we see up here when they're helping out in worship, which is really cool. Um, so for our boys and girls, maybe they sat in church and watched our youth. Um, how old do you have to be to help out with worship? What is what's it like to get into that process? What's the age? Oh, that's a great question. Uh, <laughs> We take, we start training our new YAM, so when, when you graduate from, when you move on from fifth grade up into sixth grade, and, and you leave kind of our King Street Kids program, and now you're with the youth program, that is when we start putting you in the rotation and doing the training and teaching that comes along with serving here on Sundays, and on Wednesdays, and on any other special occasion we have for worship. Well. Nice, so, nice. So, so sixth graders, not Right. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Good. So, if any of our boys and girls are like kindergarten, they might have a ways to wait. But there's still ways to do. They, they can still serve. Yeah. So I mean, I would love to see kindergarten like the altar. I think that would be fun. But we, it's great to have them come up with the children's gospel. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. We'd love to have them. Um, so there are ways that can be. And maybe, maybe they can start helping out bringing back the red wagon stuff too. The red wagon. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Red That'd red be wagon. great. I mean, I think my favorite for the kid, for the children of God movement is, is kind of managing the crowd and keeping them focused and not off on a second half of the way. Thank you, yes, yeah. off the rails. Swimming. So, what kind of things could our boys and girls look forward to doing and helping with them? We, we've got some of our things up there. Well, why don't we start with this right here, All the right. taper. Okay, so that's what it's called. I think that's what I've always called it, a taper. Okay. So light. Um, first of all, before we do that, what's an acolyte? What's an acolyte? Oh, it's not like, ooh, man, ooh. It's a trick question. A lot of times people think Isn't it's, it's, it's like it's a student, right? Yeah, like a, yeah. Like yeah. a yeah. student yeah. of. Exactly. It's an assistant. It's a, it's a helper. It's a. You were it's an assistant. It was it so fair. And so often we think an acolyte is someone who lights candles, but it's not. An acolyte does light candles, but all of our assistant ministers, grown ups, and young or acolytes, they are assisting in this. But so then I guess the bonus question would be, why is it now in churches we associate acolyte as solely like the candle lighter? I don't know. But our acolytes do more than just like candles. Absolutely. Well, oh, yeah, absolutely. So, but that is like the general, like the churchy association when you hear acolyte, yeah. you think of candle lighter or the crucifer. Well, let's start with that because that's an important one. The, the, Using the taper to light the candles, and we have a lot of candles. Yeah. <laughs> and me and Pastor Eric have been lighting them wrong the entire time during. So and I just haven't been lighting them well. It is that's that's up for debate. Is there a specific way to light? Some would argue yes, there is a very specific order. But I've also been taught different ways. Some would say that the altar candles are lit first. Others, but this is the standing altars. Some would say this. Some would say the, the illuminate the word first. So the so the, um, the lectern would be. So it, it, I think part of that depends upon your teacher. That's there, true. If there is a specific way to do it, I've done it differently. And your church too. Yeah. I follow the tradition of the church. I think Jesus is okay with how everyone. Yeah, no, I just meant more how we teach. The the we, you're right. We didn't do it the way that it's Blair and others taught. That's right. That's right. So, but yeah, so lighting candles. They help with the offering, so they take the offering plates, right? And yep, to the ushers. ushers. And when the ushers bring them back, um, they take the offering plates and make sure the manual. And the manual lifts them up. And then, we place, and then they also have been helping us lately with communion. communion because uh, we've been handing out, uh, handing out communion in people's seats. I think our acolytes have been doing a great job of being flexible because some of the stuff that we've had to do differently during COVID, they've really been able to pick up on. Yes. And they are a huge help because it's always who gets stuck with the middle when it was the three of us because the middle aisles usually are filled more so it takes so much longer. And inevitably, every Sunday we ran out of that's it. Yeah. <laughs> Which is a great thing. Yeah, yeah. Not a bad thing. A good thing. So that's what a lot of uh, what 
What are some other ways that you help us out with the worship service? Well, here, at the cross. Yeah. So, there, they hear the cross, they do this thing, like, almost like a break, it's a yeah. procession. They, they, the cross leaves the, um, we have a whole procession, the, the Bible and everybody, the banners. But they will bring us, lead us in, stand there, and then they'll place it over in this, this regular position, and then they'll lead us out. So back out after we've had the so for the gathering and for the sending, they gather us in and they send us out. So the cruise friends are very important job. They're the first one in because everybody follows the cross, and they're the first one out because everybody follows the cross. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Um, yeah. They also help with the banner. So following up the crucifer is the banner, and that kind of coordinates with the season we're in the church. And I don't know the specifics of each of our banners, but I know every shield, which Pastor Ed will get to, has a name for the season. So we're in what is common season, so regular time, ordinary time. So this particular one here, you've got so fish that is often a symbol for for our church, uh, for for early Christians and Christians today. And Jesus was always fishing because people are fish. So we have fish. Um, we also have the shell. This would be baptism. And we have baptism here in water. Then here, the ship is one of my favorites. So the ship is a very important symbol of the church. Jesus also was always hanging out with his friends and apostles and folks. They were always headed someplace. And we, in this nave, this church, is, that's where we get the word nave, or, or actual navy, it's the, the words come from one another. Um, that we are together in this congregation. Well, in this, we are. We are. And then, of course, here is the other sacrament, um, the chalice with the grapes and bread for the grape wine. So, this is only one of, I think we have six or seven new banners. And uh, they all, you're right, the chevrons, the shields, all mean something. Well, well, here, this year, right now, Daniel's doing a lot of reading on <coughs> Sunday mornings, but. Some of our yams have read have been excellent readers yeah. on Sunday morning. Um, and it's not so easy. No, <laughs> it's not so easy. It's the grammar in some of those old times, especially now, it's like Romans. All the grammar is Yeah, like well, big sentences. And then some other things, like we do have some youth that play musical instruments. Oh, yeah. And really uh, they've been up in the gallery and say play violin or big song or song. Um, and they work with Jesus. Daniel said <clears throat> September 12th is launch day. Also, God's work our hands. It's also Youth Sunday. So, the youth will have a fingerprint all over the worship that day. What else do we have? Sometimes on Youth Sunday, they preach or as if here they proclaim the word or they lead worship. But also, yams, children, and our youth, they have a role just by being engaged here in worship. And they participate in worship, they say the words, the dialogue back and forth, they sing, they stand, they kneel, they are participants in the service, just like the moms are. Yeah. So, one last little question. Yeah. So, I think we've all served in, growing up in our own churches, it's like athletes and consumers. Um, do y'all have any stories of Funny stories or confusing stories being athletic. Do I have funny stories? Uh, uh, <laughs> yeah, there are a couple, and I'll go with one, and then I'm sure when my parents visit, they can tell you all the others. But I'll never forget my home church was I went through in Malden. We don't have kind of the all the candles; we just have the two on the altar. And so I went up to light them, and and we process uh, the taper in. So all of our stuff is back there, like, you know, the, the lighter and everything. And when I got up to light the, the candles, I turned it too quick and it extinguished. And so I had to then walk back out of the church to relight the taper to come back in so we could start our show. So that was fun. Yeah. So, 
So at my home church, when I was growing up, Nick and Shepherd, um, the church that we're in, the sanctuary space we're in now, that's not the original. The old one has all this water. And up against the wall, there was kind of this cloth that came down behind the candles. And it was awful close to the candles. So I was always scared. I would not going to never caught the cloth on fire, but I was always scared that I was going to trip or do something where I accidentally light the back of the altar on fire. So that was that was a legitimate fear. Um, so I was more relieved when we got to a space like where the altar was freestanding and there weren't flammable things behind it. So, yeah. I don't have to go back to the park. Your childhood. I, and so I, one of the things I get more nervous about is, I don't really get nervous much with preach or do those things, but I get nervous about the small logistics, like you said, and like, do you have an extra match here, like, just like our smart altar deal with us, like, you have an extra match here. It's those small things that make me nervous about what happens, or am I standing in the right place, or if not, and I've, I've come over time to realize that that doesn't matter if I mess up, then people will forgive if, I, you know, if it doesn't look perfect. But I remember one time I was at St. Matthew's, this was in Philadelphia, at my hill church there, this was, was in the seminary part. Yeah, this was when I was in Philadelphia. Um, and um, I was doing, I was the cantor there, and so I was, I was behind the altar, and I hear the notes, and it's a different setting and no one had told me that it was had changed, and I didn't know the setting. <laughs> and it was really painful oh, to get through the curie when I was the lead leader and I didn't know what I was singing. That was that was not. And I, I don't really, I don't really read music, and so it was it was very embarrassing. My my thing for here, it was I guess it was what two years ago. We had the Good Friday, or whatever. <laughs> so when we we, we well, on one I tripped. Yeah, it was like the Good Friday, and I tripped. And then there was the other service where we stripped the altar, and we we didn't want to set up the big brass cross. So we're like, Dan can just throw this black veil over it, and it'll be great. And I spent way too much time practicing, so that it would just be one and done. And then when it came time for the moment of truth, I failed. I remember my first Sunday here, uh, probably my first sermon, I was supposed to preach, and my microphone was acting up, and it was making all this noise and stuff, and so before I could go into the pool, we had to run back to the sacristy and switch my packs, and then I could go up and, and preach, and I, I remember before I even started preaching, apologizing to the congregation, saying, sorry about that, but we go on, so I just had to sort of brush it off and be like, but we're moving on now. But sometimes you have to do that. that. That's just, right. Sometimes worship isn't like pretty, pretty like yeah. perfect. Sometimes you have to improvise, and it's okay because Jesus still shows up. That's right. And even if you're embarrassed, like Good Friday, Virginia, Grace Waynesboro was taking the cross out, and I had that song that I have to chant. Behold the life of the cross, which was hung the Savior of the world, or however it goes. And I forgot the line. I was like there, and everybody was looking. And they were kind of dependent upon me and finished. And so I got halfway down. And I still didn't know what to say. I didn't know. I didn't even know what to make of at this point. That was another embarrassing moment. Just keep going. But Jesus still came back to all these ones. Keep going. Worship still happens. Jesus still shows. So when the boys and girls mess up, or grown-ups mess up, it's okay because worship is perfect, so work together. I tell people worship isn't a performance. That's right. It's worship. That's right. We are glad for people to show up and share their gifts for worship. That's right. And if you mess up, hello. That's right. (laughs) Pretty place in perfect people. That's right. Where should they send their questions? Email me at youth at org. Fantastic. Awesome. All right. Bye. 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 There's also the times of the week where I straight up skip words. I'm like, oh, don't really remember this one. So.